Alright, hello everybody and welcome back to JMonkey Engine Physically Based Rendering Tutorial. This is the second part in which we'll be taking a look at light probes. These things over here. What they are and why do we even need them. I'm using JMonkey Engine itself and the SDK built from their respective GitHub master branches. So some stuff might not really be in current release builds. So I'll make sure I leave a note somewhere on the screen when uh, some feature I'm talking about is not part of the current release build. But with that out of the way, let's figure out what light probes are. So, what are the light probes then? Well, a light probe is an object in your scene which holds a picture of the environment taken from the light probe's position. So, did this, what I just said, make any sense? Probably not. So let's illustrate a bit. Have you ever seen a 360 degree panorama photo or a photosphere, like Google tends to call them? They're often found on famous places on Google Maps. And you can basically drag your cursor around to look around. Basically, it's like Street View, pretty much, but taken from a phone camera. Well, light probes are pretty much the same, except that they generate this panoramic photo at this position they are placed. All right, all right, we get it. It's a fancy 360 camera, you're, you're gonna say. But why do you even need it in the scene? How does it help? Well, you need it for two reasons. The first one is reflections, as we have discussed in the previous part of the tutorial, and the other reason is environmental lighting. Remember how we said back in part one that if roughness is low enough, the material will reflect its environment? A reflective sphere with roughness of zero is exactly what the SDK uses to represent a light probe, and that's also what we got here. But in order for the reflections to work, the shaders need to get the data about what to reflect from somewhere. Since ray tracing is still taking off very slowly and OpenGL, which is JMonkey Engine's backend, doesn't support it, we can't calculate what to reflect in real time. So what do we do then? Well, we ask the nearest light probes what color the environment is in the direction we're trying to compute the reflection for. And this is also where the positioning of the light probes comes into play. Ideally, we'd have a light probe in every point of our 3D space for the most accurate results, but that would be very tedious and computationally costly to make, as well as the file would be huge. So we have to make compromises and place light probes in strategical positions around our scene, so all the important objects can be seen in the reflections. But positioning and baking the light probes is gonna be the topic of the third part of this tutorial. So for now, I'll just let you know that you can bake the light probes once you have them placed in the scene by clicking this refresh button here. And I think it's also done automatically once you place them for the first time. You can use up to three light probes at the same time for any given material. So don't worry if the radiuses or radii, as they're properly called, overlap of multiple light probes. But yeah, that's gonna be about baking for now and reflections. So let's see how the environmental lighting changes the way our scene looks. Environmental lighting is something best explained by an example. So I went ahead and added a directional light here facing roughly the same direction as our sun is shining from. Right now it's disabled and only the light probe is influencing the lighting calculations of this scene. But if I disable the light probe and enable the directional light, you will notice that the scene looks slightly worse. So if we disable the light probe, everything goes black, obviously. Enable the directional light, you can see how everything looks a bit more unnatural. There's no ambient colors from the environment bouncing off into the material we are looking at. And that's what environment lighting is all about. If the whole scene is blue, then obviously your material is gonna look slightly more blue as well. That's how it works in the real world. And that's also why just a regular directional light doesn't do the scene justice. So if we enable the light probe again, you can see it's much smoother. We got some greenish hues reflecting off. And overall, it just looks more realistic, like this 
seen actually only missing a shadow underneath the spaceship. And I'd be pretty happy with it actually. Oh yeah, before we wrap up this video, there's one more thing I felt like it doesn't really belong into any part of the script, but still have to tell it. There's a way to actually influence how much the light probes influence the overall lighting calculations. What do I mean with that? Well, let's say you're trying to make a day and night cycle. Instead of changing your entire scene and then rebaking all the probes, what you can do is add an ambient light to the scene. In non-PBR workflow in JMonkey, what this does is basically just add some light to all the lighting calculation. But what it does with PBR is it multiplies its color by the influence of the light probe. What do I mean with that? Well, right now this ambient light here is completely white. So the light probes are fully influencing the scene. But if I change this to some form of gray, we're going to immediately see that the whole scene is darker now. That's because the probe has less influence. And if I bring it all the way down to pitch black, it should... Yeah, it's basically as if I disabled the light probe. But that's probably all the theory you have to know about light probes to efficiently use them. I hope you learned something and see you around in the next part of this tutorial when we're gonna take a look at some good practices when positioning and baking light probes in JMonkey Engine. Thanks for watching everyone and goodbye!